Cute. Cute. No, I didn't know either. No. Oh, 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 we're live. Hi. Oh, excuse us. Sorry, we were just doing a little chatting here. Well, little gab. I am so excited <laughs> to introduce you to my friend and guest, Angela Johnson Reyes. Angela, welcome to the Sammy Cone Show. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I, I want to let everyone in on this fabulous secret. We're saying it's not a yeah. secret, it's your show that's coming up. But, yeah. but first, I mean, I'm holding your book, uh -huh. Who Do I Think I Am? Tour. I mean, we've been laughing along with you for years yeah. and years I mean what keeps you going at this point where's the material come from uh, everyday life my material yeah. comes from everyday <laughs> life my husband gives me a lot of material marriage is just it's like a gold mine of just jokes in there yeah. <laughs> um, but honestly what keeps me going is when I am um, in, in front of an audience and I hear the laughter and yeah. I feel the laughter mm -hmm. and you realize that you are a part of bringing medicine, which is joy, mm -hmm. to a city and a different city and another city and another yeah. city, that you're part of the remedy, you're part yeah. of the healing, like that, it's a really special experience. Yeah, well, you know, I have uh, Blanca on the show today, yes. who you know, and I had asked her recently, what was it like coming up in an industry where you didn't see a lot of people, especially women, that looked like you. I have to imagine in stand-up comedy and TV, I mean, did you experience a little bit of that? And how did you kind of get to where you are in yeah. Trailblaze? Um, you know what? YouTube popped me off. So that mm -hmm. was definitely um, helpful for yeah. me. Because at the time, I wasn't really trying to be a comedian. It was mm. just something that I did as a fluke, really. I took a free joke writing class at a church on Tuesday nights. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. And then at our graduation was we had to perform at a real comedy club. And I did well at that performance. So I was like, I guess I'll do it again. Because had I done bad, had I bombed? You right. hear that story a lot. Right. Comedians are yeah. like, oh, I bombed my first time. If that was my story, I would have never done it again. Because that wasn't what I wanted to do. So it was kind of like an accident, how I kind of fell into stand-up comedy yeah yeah that's so crazy and I mean and you talked about doing something at church I mean you're in the faith world you're in the comedy world how do you bridge both of those because from my end it looks pretty effortlessly like you are who you are yeah. in both worlds yeah. do you ever get slack for that I mean I feel like sometimes people are kind of you know sure. hated a little bit for sure doing both. But honestly, m maybe not in the way that you would expect mm. slack, right? I think I would get more grief from the faith community mm. when I don't do things that are according to someone's standards, according mm. to their interpretation of a scripture, according to this and that and whatever, whatever. So I feel like it's easy when you just do you and do you well and you show up not trying to please anyone, yeah. not trying to please your congregation, your pastor, your parents or whoever, but just trusting your relationship with God and trusting yourself yeah. knowing that you will always disappoint someone yeah. you will always say something that this person was offended by or this person thought that was not of the Lord or this person thought whatever <laughs> so you're always gonna disappoint somebody yeah. so I feel like it's easy for me because I just own who I am I just yeah. I am who I am and I'm aware I'm, I'm probably gonna disappoint somebody at some point and that's okay and disappointment is my trigger word I hate disappointing mm. people it's definitely been a journey having to get to the place where I am now where I'm like I get it not everybody's gonna leave happy and yeah. that's okay well that's so healthy and I mean your book here who do I think I am like did that fuel part of the writing of the books so I would have to imagine oh, that yeah. was a hard introspective look to not just be kind of one and done on a stage but then to put it on paper yeah so I definitely talk a lot about my life my childhood growing up my faith journey how it's evolved where I'm at today I talk about everything from dating to my marriage um, I pretty much I put it all out there and then before it got published I was going through and I was reading through and I'm like ooh, do oh, I really want to yeah. share this story <laughs> okay I guess right, so you know right. but that's my life it's my testimony it's who I am it's so. amazing well before I go you are actually performing at the historic Ryman Auditorium not yes. once but twice on October 1st and you're filming a special before we go yeah tell us about that and how can people be a part I am filming my sixth our special to clarify it's not six hours of comedy no. <laughs> it's the sixth one hour right. special that i've done Even though we'd show and up for that, yeah too. thank you and <laughs> it's snacks, october first oh, you gotta bring your snacks <laughs> oh you gotta have your, your church yeah, snacks yeah. and your purse um but yes i'll be at the ryman october first doing two shows first show sold out we have tickets still available for the second show and come be a part of my taping of my sixth one hour special that's fantastic well we will work on the charcuterie board for yeah. the snacks yeah. for that but you heard it here you can 
can see Angela at the Ryman on October 1st, the second show, of course, because it's all sold out. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank and you. make sure you pick up her book, Who Do I Think I Am? Angela Johnson Reyes. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you.